<laughs> so I should start all my videos just crashing into my blinds. Oh, let's hang out. Let's just hang. Some people asked me a couple of questions the other day and I figured I'd just answer them. So there'll be a lot of stuff about personal development, a lot of stuff about creativity and careers, and a few questions just for, for myself, I suppose. Have I got too many buttons undone? You know what? Enjoy my chest. All right. Let's go. How do you pursue something when everyone else is telling you that you'll never be able to achieve that? Oh my God, especially if it's career related. You poor thing, I'm so sorry. Um, well, not everybody's telling you that. I'm telling you to go for it. Depends what it is. I mean, if you're trying to kill people, no, nah, don't do that. Everyone's right. But I find that the, the people telling you not to do stuff fall into three categories. So there's the people who are telling you out of love. So this is my mom when I quit my advertising job to try tattooing. She was telling me out of love because she's like, no, 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 you have a good job, you have money, don't do it. That came from love. There is hate, which is actually the biggest compliment in disguise. So these are the people who think that you can actually do it. And they're like, I don't wanna see that because then I'll have to deal with the fact that I didn't do it. And so they'll try to bring you down before you even start. That's a compliment. Then there's logic. So these are the people who look at you and you're five foot two and you're trying to be in the NBA and they're like, statistically, it's just not gonna happen. I mean, we got Muggsy Bogues, but there's only one of him. So what I would do, instead of having a non-specific, everyone saying this, is to try and make it as specific as possible. So put it down in a list so we can actually see. And usually when I do this, it's only like eight people who have opinions on my life. And a lot of them come from love, only a few come from hate. Some might come from logic, but not that many. And then once you've written them down, put in another column and just be like, why I'm still doing it. And then if it were me, I'd just back yourself. How many hats do you have right now? 23. You said in one of your videos that you started drawing seriously later in life. What was your process for improving your skills as soon as possible? Great question, because it is possible to improve your skills fast. Copying, copying. It was those drawing challenge videos where I draw in the style of someone else. That was pretty much it, imitation. What's your favorite song right now? Concrete Jungle Fever by Jerome Farrer. I love it. What would you say to someone who thinks what they're creating is bad and unoriginal? Oh. Firstly, I'm sorry that you think that. Secondly, what I say, that's a common thought and probably a good one because the more that you think that, the more likely you will be to push creative boundaries because you want to be escaping that negativity. Thirdly, what I'd say, if it is objectively bad and unoriginal, which I do believe things can be, that's the first step to making things that are good and original. You need to go through that phase. You don't just start as good and original. It's one then the other. So I'd probably say, and it's corny, but I'd probably just say keep going. Pizza or garlic bread? Pizza? Who picked garlic bread? Pizza has garlic on it and it is technically bread. You get bread plus garlic plus other stuff. It's better, it's better value. How did you get over just talking to the camera? I am trying with my channel and uh, it's so weird. <laughs> Do you have a script? Is it a flow? Tell me your secrets. To get over talking to the camera, I started picturing the camera as my friend's face. I put my friend Mitch's face mentally on the camera and the first time I did that, it was my first good video, in my opinion. So I just pretended I was having a conversation with him and that really helped. I think I've still got a long way to go. My last video was super robotic, so I don't know. Do I have a script or is it a flow? It's a bit of both. So I make the bullet points of exactly what I want to cover. Sometimes I'll write them out in full, but I'll only ever look at the topic and then I'll try to say it to the camera as cleanly as possible. Also, I usually film all my videos twice because I hate the first take. That's like a warm up, like a dress rehearsal. This is the second time. This is actually the third time I've done this video. Woo, perfectionist. Can I have some money? You certainly can. May you? Hmm. This might be tough for you. Why, at the psychological level, people get tattooed? Woo, no, that's not tough at all. There's, there's so many reasons. Maybe not psychological level, but it looks cool. Counterpoint, it's probably the biggest hate comment that I get. Anytime any video goes viral or something, there's always just like, Ugh, someone just being like, tattoos are stupid. Tattoos will look terrible in 10 years. Fuck off. I think they're a brilliant metaphor for life. You know, you accept that things change in an irreversible way. And that's, that's kind of what's going on, isn't it? Can't go back from this. It's beautiful. Quick break for my second ever sponsor on this channel. And just quickly, I'm never gonna pick a sponsor that I don't believe in. So this one is for a mental health company. BetterHelp. Thank you very much, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this video. I figured it was appropriate seeing as I was answering questions, given what BetterHelp does. BetterHelp is an online service that assesses your needs and matches you with an online therapist. And you can start communicating with them within 48 hours. If there is something that's interfering with your happiness, then BetterHelp might be the thing that helps you. It's not a crisis line, it's not self-help, it is online professional counseling, and it is done securely. They've got over 15,000 counselors with a broad range of experts 
expertise. So this really helps if you live rurally and you can't get that kind of service locally. It's available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account at any time and send messages to your counselor. And you can even schedule a weekly phone call if you'd like, which is like therapy without the waiting room. They've got financial aid available and it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling. And it's free and easy to change therapists if you need. Basically, they want you to start living a happier life today, which I think is a pretty happy mission. Visit betterhelp.com slash struthless and join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. And if you want 10% off your first month, do go to that URL. So that's betterhelp.com slash struthless. Alrighty, back to the video. Advice for someone pushing their art and business and hating the business side so much that it's sucking the life out of my art. Oh, yes, I know this feeling. It really depends on what you want. So let's go to scenarios. So in scenario A, you just want to feel good. You just want to love your art and feel good. Maybe it shouldn't become a business. Scenario B, you want to live off your art. You do want your art to be a business. No matter what, there's going to be compromise. So that will either be a compromise on your time. Half of your week sucks because you have to do contracts and emails and scheduling and all the stuff that just, I don't know, for whatever reason grinds your gears. Or it could be a compromise on your money or equity. So let's say you have an art business and you've got 100% of this art business. You could give X percent to a friend who you know is really good with business, doesn't know much about art, but just wants to be involved. And and they could take all of that or you could get a manager who takes a small percentage and that would be the compromise that you'd make in that scenario. If I had to put it in three steps, figure out what the end goal is, figure out what you're willing to compromise on and then create that long-term solution. Are you from Melbourne? No, don't let the tattoos fool you. Advice for teenage boys feeling restless and lost in the world. Can't answer because I definitely was one. I would say you will want to be reckless but try give yourself the safest environment to be reckless in. So don't go smoking weed with some really sketchy people. Smoke weed with your friends. Don't get adrenaline from driving your car really fast. Get adrenaline from the skate park. And then lesson two would be recognizing that nobody will come to save you. I think it's easy to think that there will be a safety net in life, but often there isn't. And the quicker that we accept this and take personal responsibility for improving ourselves, the better everything is. And when you're a teenager, that has a massive compounding effect. So you doing anything positive right now will, oh, you'll just thank yourself later. So yeah, hopefully that helps. What's your favorite toast topping? Not Alex, Vegemite, avocado, tomato, pepper. If I remember correctly, you wanted Struthless Studios to become the Studio Ghibli of Australia. What do you wish to be your first blockbuster animation slash movie slash series? I mean, is there a specific story you want to share? I hope you make it. I hope I do too. And you are absolutely correct. I did say that and I still mean that. 100%. Pretty cool news about that actually. When I said that, I said that we had started working on our first series, which was a show called Hump Wallace. And guess what? This week, we finished animating the pilot. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. A year. It took a year to do that. I thought it would take three months. I was so wrong. It took four times what I thought. That is so wrong. But the cool part is by the time this video comes out, we will be shopping it to networks. So we've kind of lined up all these meetings with, you know, your various streamers and the various channels and stuff. And it's going to be shown to a lot of people. And I don't know, a couple of those people are pretty excited about seeing it. And I'm excited about it. I think it's good. I don't know if they'll think it's good. Who knows? We'll find out. Put that in your pipe and hump it. Baby. Did you ever think you'd end up running a successful self-help YouTube channel? No, no I didn't. I like it though. It's been a nice, I don't know, nice addition. Who are your biggest inspirations? Tyler the Creator, Goggins, even though not everybody likes him. Justin Roiland, Brene Brown, Eric Andre a little bit. Is creativity associated with sadness or depression? Are highly creative people more prone to these emotions? In my experience, definitely. I personally have pretty hectic mood swings and I find I am not creative at all when I'm low and super creative at the top. But the good part is I can draw the experience from when I'm low and use it and that helps the creativity resonate, or at least I think it does. So yes, big yes. I don't know the actual answer, I can only give you what I've sampled from friends that I've seen and stuff. Books, animations, tattoos. What other creative mediums would you like to try? Board games, card games, live shows, musicals. I want to say stand-up comedy, but then I saw that meme that was like, boys thinking about doing stand-up comedy is like girls thinking about getting bangs. And I'm like, hmm, maybe that's just something that I think from time to time. Any question you'd have someone ask themselves when they've been pursuing something for years, like a degree, and now feel stuck in obligations surrounding it, but realize that they don't want the thing they were pursuing. I like this one because the answer has to be in a question. I would say, how was this time not wasted? How's sobriety? Do you ever self-sabotage? I'll answer the second one first. Yes, yes I do. Not very much, I will say. Like, not with big binges or drugs. I did drugs once this year, and it's August, and I regretted it so much. 
And as soon as I started doing them, I ended up doing a lot of them. <sighs> How is sobriety? So other than that, it has drawbacks in the sense that you need to properly face yourself and just experience time and life. But the positives are, well, they're really quite tangible. So you get healthier, your skin gets better. So if you're a little bit vain, sobriety is pretty awesome you get more time. I think that was the biggest shock for me was just how much time I had both at nights and in the mornings. You sleep really well, so your mental health improves. I don't know, if you're curious, I thoroughly recommend it, or at least recommend getting to a certain percentage of sobriety. I'd call myself 90% sober, but yeah, I love it, I love it. It's actually made me feel like all the things that I want in life are achievable. What is your favorite thing about your significant other and how did you know they were right for you? Oh, so much stuff. Yeah, okay, my favorite thing? She makes me laugh a lot. I find it very funny, super goofy. How did you know they were right for you? Just did, just did. Number one, I don't know. What do you do to decompress, relax, reset, and keep your creativity fresh? Go on long walks, stand up comedy, sleeping cooking. Time away from everything and time away particularly from my phone and anything that just seems to demand my brain. That. Why you started this channel, elaborate if you can. And do you have a plan? I started this channel and this is something that you hear a lot but it's the truth so I don't want to make up a different answer in order to satisfy not being a cliche because it's the advice that I wish existed. I also did it to kind of articulate all the stuff and the rules and the lessons in my head and just put them into a neat package just to make sure I understood them. You know that thing that if you understand a concept, you can explain it really clearly. And if you don't understand it, you can't explain it really clearly. That, so just making sure I understood them. And do you have a plan? Yeah, I think ultimately what this whole channel is about and what my entire life's work will probably be about is about you just being the glorious weirdo that you are and just celebrating that all the time with compassion and love and just letting everybody just open up and chill and just enjoy themselves, you know? And I might do that through non-fiction, like in this channel where I talk and hopefully create a community around growth. Or I might do that with fiction, which is what the animation studio is all about. In terms of my wider life, yeah, just have a beautiful life with Felicity, make a little family, try to go swimming a lot, try to have a positive impact on the world, try to return all the love that my mum showed me. How does it feel to be able to genuinely inspire people from different backgrounds and cultures all over the world? Amazing. God, it's the best feeling. Like true resonance. I love it. And there it is. Thank you so much for all those questions. Thank you so much for everybody who subscribed to this channel. Anyone who's ever viewed or left a comment or Everybody who's pre-ordered my book and told me that they've pre-ordered, I friggin' love you all. This is becoming a beautiful, positive community and I don't know, it feels like a lot of like-minded people and I'm just stoked, I'm just stoked. It's good. I hope that we can all, I don't know, continue this. I guess I just wanna say thank you. So all of you are collectively making my life better and I just wanna friggin' give that back, you get it. All right, catch ya.